It seems so strange to me that though mixed race or mixed heritage people are the fastest growing minority in Britain, we find it so difficult to define ourselves. So, in this series I hope to explore our histories, our hopes, our fears, our aspirations and how we fit into this modern race obsessed society. Are we, as some suggest, the solution to a divided world? Or as others think, the destruction of racial identity? The truth is, I don't really know. But I'm going to try my best to find out. I mean, shit, we still live in a world that can't decide what to call us. Blues ain't nothing but a good woman gone bad. Blues ain't nothing but a good woman gone bad. Whether I liked it or not, I was most definitely the result of the free-thinking, free-loving 1970s. My mum was white, from Barnsley, a town famous for brass bands and pits. My dad, black, from New Orleans, a town equally famous for jazz bands and Mardi Gras. In the late 60s, my mum left North Yorkshire and headed for the segregated southern states of America. She said she wanted to change the world. And in a heady haze of flower power, drugs and free love, I guess she did. But after several nasty incidents involving guns, bullets, bottles and men in white hoods, my mother fled that particular hotbed of racial tension and headed home her new black husband in tow. And then, less than a month after interracial marriage had been legalized in America, with both black and white blood coursing through my veins, I was born. I'm on the and neither family would ever be the same. And I can remember when you were first born and I used to, I used to take you out in the pram and people would look in and go, oh, it's quite dark, isn't it? And I'd, and I'd say to people, well, actually, his dad's black. I still find it hard to believe that in the 21st century, race mixing still stirs such emotion amongst people. You only have to glance the internet to see page after page of opinion. As well as the obvious racial purity web pages, Porn sites showing interracial sex are listed as a fetish, alongside bestiality, bondage, and businessmen wearing nappies. If interracial sex is a fetish, then what does that make the offspring? It's not all doom and gloom, though. According to the internet, the one thing that white supremacists and black separatists can agree on is their hatred of us. You see, the Jim Crow laws of the 1800s determined that you were black if you had one drop of black blood flowing through your veins. All this from the men who brought the world lynching, gollywogs and black and white minstrels. But the sad truth is we didn't fare so well with the black power movement either. There was to be no mixing with the white devil, so therefore no us. I came across an interesting quote on the internet recently. I wasn't so much surprised by the content of the quote. I've met many other mixed heritage people in my life with similar issues and experiences. The thing that surprised me was who the quote was from, Halle Berry, and that got me thinking. I mean, I know as a mixed race, biracial, mixed heritage filmmaker, I've had to compromise, accommodate, adapt, assimilate, reinvent, and put up with some incredible shit in my life. But how hard must it be for high profile Hollywood icons? You see, secretly, from my experience anyway, I believe mixed race or mixed heritage people very rarely get to be who they truly are. They're either hijacked by one or both of their birth cultures when they're at the top of their success, or excluded by both when they're at the bottom. It is obvious to me that mixed heritage stars must walk a very thin line between their two cultures, careful not to alienate one from the other. They must remain light enough for their white audience and dark enough for their black fans. And that really can't be any way to live. Hollywood is a high pressure environment for all celebrities. But what effect does the added pressure of being mixed heritage have? I really wanted to find out.